Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I'm going to answer one of the Java interview questions. That is class dot for name of X. What will you write in place of X? Let me answer this question with practical demonstration. So in this particular statement, if you write this particular statement in the Java programs, that is class dot for name of X, okay? In place of this particular X, what do you generally write in the Java programs? We generally provide the name of the class, okay? Sometimes the class may not be directly available. It will be there under a package. So we have to give the package name dot class name. And the purpose of we providing the class details inside this class dot for name statement is to load that particular class dynamically, okay? During the Java programs, if you want to load any particular class dynamically, then we have to use this statement known as class dot for name. Inside this method, we have to pass that particular class that you want to load dynamically here in place of X. That's the answer, straightforward answer for this question. So practically, I'm going to show you this, okay? I will also show you the real time case where we generally use this class dot for name of X in real time, okay? So fine. So first I'll create a new package, uh, new class here. I'll just name this as let's say demo two or something. Demo two, some name with main method. Okay. And during this program, if you want to load any particular class, okay. In this particular program, okay, that is going to be displayed here. So inside this main method, let's say during at any particular point of time, when you run the program, you want to load a particular class. Okay. When you want to load a particular class, we have to use a predefined thing known as class. Okay. Class dot dot for name. Okay. You have to use class dot for name. This particular statement you have to use or the mouse. In real time, you can surround this with the try catch block because whatever the class details you are providing here, if that particular class is not available to be loaded, class not found exception may come. So it's a checked exception. Compiler is in way, be, may, way before you run this particular program, you execute this particular program, compiler is suggesting you that there's a possibility of you getting class not found exception after you run, okay? So it's asking you to handle this exception. It's a checked exception. If you are pretty sure that uh, you're going to give a proper class details here and you know, you're not going to get class not found exception. In that case, you can ignore the exception by, you know, using the throws keyword here. Otherwise in real time, I generally recommend you to surround this particular statement with try catch blocks, okay? Inside this for name, you have to give the uh, class details that you want to load dynamically, okay? This statement is going to load the class details. Otherwise, you can also do one thing, guys, okay? Instead of this, let's surround this with the try catch block, okay? If no exception is coming, no uh, class not found exception is not coming, let's say, okay, if there is no exception coming, the class is loaded properly. In that case, I'll just print out here. If there is no exception, this particular statement, okay? If there is no exception coming in this line eight, okay? In this particular line eight, if there is no exception coming, I'll give the name of the class and all this here. If there is no exception coming here, class is loaded, okay? Successfully, I'll say. The statement is not complete, guys. Here, I need to provide in double quotes. I need to give the details of the class that I want to load. And what if the exception has come? In that case, I would like to print out system.out.println. Class is not loaded. Class is not loaded, okay? Class is not loaded, I'll write, okay? This try catch will help us in finding out whether this particular class, this statement is loading the class dynamically or not. Let's for now take any class case. For example, let's take a string class. Everyone know about the string predefined class in Java, right? So let's go to the library of Java and find out where exactly the string class is. Let's go to the java.base. Under the java.base, we have something like Java under that lang. Under that lang, we have somewhere here string class case, okay? Let's find out MNOPQRS string dot this particular class I want to load. If I want to load directly, I should not say string dot class, okay? I should not simply give the name of the class here, that is string I should not be giving. Where this string class is available? String class under the Java library is available under the, okay, Java. Okay, this is a jar file. Uh, that is package kind of stuff uh, under the package here. Java package is there. So here we have to write Java. Under that Java, we have lang sub package, lang. Under that lang sub package, we have this string dot class file, okay, that I want to load dynamically. Okay, while I run the program, I want to load this string class dynamically, okay? So this is how we need to give the package details and the class details that you want to load dynamically, run the program here. 
write click run as Java application. If the class is the string class is loaded successfully during the program, class is load, loaded successfully will be printed. Okay. Here intentionally I'll give some ABC here. There's no such class with the name string ABC. So in this case, class not loaded will come because class AB string ABC is not the class is not loaded. Class not found exception because we have printed the strike trace. So strike trace is getting printed here. Okay. So if you give a correct class and the correct details of the class, okay, which is available, then it will load successfully, guys. So class dot for name is to load the classes, whatever the classes you want to load dynamically while running the programs during the runtime. If you want to load any particular classes dynamically, then you have to use this statement. So this is uh, what is the question all about here in place of this X, what do you provide means details of the class we have to provide whatever the class we want to load uh, dynamically along with the package details and all we need to provide the class name. Okay. So this is not the real time use case is only for demonstration to see that how we can load any particular class in Java. But what is the use of loading a string class? I don't see any use case here. But if you have to really see a use case guys in the previous session, uh, previous uh, question and answer right regarding JDBC connectivity, right? So as part of JDBC connectivity, we have used this statement guys class dot for name statement we have already used. If you want to know more about this JDBC and uh, what we have done here, you can watch the previous uh, interview question on how to connect to a database with the help of uh, from Java programs with the help of J uh, JDBC and what is the purpose of JDBC I covered there. You see class dot for name here from this not from this driver is a class guys, but it's not from the Java library. It's from the JDBC library. Okay. Where is this driver class available? Before you start connecting to any database with the help of JDBC, there is a JDBC library is added here, guys. You see, there is a JDBC library here. MySQL connector, some kind of JDBC library uh, is added here. From that library, we need to load this driver class. After loading the driver class from JDBC library, not from Java library, from JDBC library, then only we can connect to the database. Okay, this need to be done to load the driver class. And after loading the driver class, you can connect to the database. Guys. Okay, using this uh, driver manager connection, you can connect in JDBC. Okay, this is one of the use case where we can use class dot for name to load the driver class of the JDBC library before we connect to any database from the Java programs with the help of JDBC. Okay. So this is a real use case, guys. This is a real use case. For more details about this use case, you can watch the previous video, guys. Okay, previous uh, interview question video of the same series, and you'll get to know the details of this. Okay. So with the practical demonstration and theoretical explanation, I've answered this question for you. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye bye.